Welcome. This is our second webinar with um, CC Councils. And we have today with us Kat Walsh, who is the um, Creative Commons General Counsel. And I'm going to let her introduce herself and kind of take it from there. And I'll, I'll be here to, to help. Great. Thank you. And like, uh, it's great to see all of you here today. Uh, it's, I'm Kat Walsh. I'm CC's General Counsel. Uh, uh, this is actually my second time at CC. I was there from 2012 to 2015 and one of the co-authors of the version 4.0. Uh, and I came back about two years ago. Uh, my background is mostly in like open content and free software. Uh, I came to free content through getting involved with Wikimedia, which is what made me decide that I wanted to go to law school. And I uh, worked with that project for a while, as well as the Free Software Foundation and the American Library Association. Uh, and now I am back here to help answer your licensing questions. Uh, so I see there are a lot of interesting questions in the doc. Uh, and I will start with a disclaimer, which is how you know that I'm a real lawyer, which is to say, like, I can give you general information. I will be as helpful as I can. Uh, I can talk about general principles, but I cannot give you specific legal advice about your situation. Uh, I will try and be as helpful as I can in my answers, but if you have a situation that is very like fact specific and you want to know what you can do, uh, I, I can't give you that answer. I will probably tell you to go to your institutional counsel or any personal counsel that you have. Uh, but that said, uh, there's a lot of interesting questions in the document, and I'm, uh, I know some of them always get asked by people who are not, who can't make it to this, and I'd like to prioritize the people in the room. So I'd like to ask you if, if you're in the room and you have a question that's on the doc, uh, uh, let's, uh, yeah, feel, you should feel free to speak up and ask your question. <laughs> and we may want to raise hands here because there's a lot of people in this uh, seminar. And if nobody wants to speak up, I will just pick one from the duck and start answering. So I might I might jump in if nobody else is. I'm going to set the stage then. How about that? Sounds great. Um, th there was a really interesting one uh, down a little further about the. Can you elaborate on how the adapters licensing mechanism works for? Uh, and I'll, I'll put the link in the chat because this is a question that seems to come up a lot, which is how far back do you have to give attribution? Right, like to the person you attributed. Um, their, you know, what they used and what they used before that. And I think that's what this one addresses. Is that, is that correct? Yeah. So, so one of the, one of the things we did in version 4.0 was try and be a little bit more deliberate about like compatibility and what that meant. And also like we, we got particularly uh, strict about like publishing, like what are the conditions under which we would determine and that a license was compatible for adaptations to be sure that it really reflected the same spirit, uh, such like that, because we wanted to make things less complicated for reusers. Uh, and one of the ways in which things uh, became less complicated for reusers it's, is that we allow people when they're distributing an adaptation, like, so say you have a work under 3.0 and you want to remix it and you want to license your remix under 4.0, uh, you can't actually change the license of that original work like that. Distributing your 4.0 version, uh, you can just refer to like, you know, copyright, like copyright, original author, and you like CC by 4.0. Uh, and part of the reason that you can do that is because the, the licenses are similar enough in spirit that if a reuser sees that and they're complying with the terms of that adapter's license, they're also complying with the terms of those earlier licenses. Uh, like they, that happens automatically. They're not going to be in violation of those licenses if they comply. So it's not uh, it's not doing a disservice uh, to the reuser to, to see to just see the latest license information in that. Uh, that said, you should always uh, you should always provide as much information to your reusers as you can about like where you got the material, what it's licensed in case they want to take that material and reuse only part of it. Uh, but but those licenses uh, those licenses do stack uh, and if you are distributing and you want to make it simple for reusers, you don't have necessarily have to acknowledge all the uh, earlier compatible licenses. you can 
you have to acknowledge the authors, but you can just say CC by 4.0 or whatever your license is. <coughs> I'm gonna apologize a little. I'm still a little congested from being sick this weekend, so I'm probably gonna end up coughing a couple times on this call. There's another one uh, question in here that I think will be pretty short to answer, which I think is interesting because I haven't seen it before. And uh, are there any instances in which the NC and SA conditions conflict with each other uh, when using a by NC SA license? Uh, and I will say that uh, they don't conflict with each other uh, even when one involves restrictions, uh, it involves more restrictions uh, than the other would. Uh, it's similar to like, to do SA and BI conflict with each other? Like there are situations where you could use, uh, where like you would be able to use the work under the SA conditions. Say you want to do share like in a commercial context and, and the NC condition says that you can't. Uh, that's not a, a conflict. It's just like that this is a whole this is a whole package of restrictions, like, uh, or a whole a whole package of conditions that restrict what you do. Uh, SA says you have to share alike, NC says you can only do it non-commercially. Uh, it's not conflicting with the share alike, it's just adding additional terms to that. Uh, the same way that by SA is like, well, by says basically you just have to give attribution, SA says you have to share, share alike any adapted work. Uh, there are situations where like, uh, where you can't do a thing because you don't want to share alike that you could do under just buy that you you can't do with SA because you have to share alike. Uh, they're not conflicting with each other. It means like this is just like a whole package of terms and you have to comply with all of them. Yep. Let's see. And there's a, a question in the chat that's kind of a <clears throat> a follow up from the last webinar. Can you see that or would you prefer me to read it? Uh, let me see. Yeah, if you could read that, if you could read that out, I think I can see it. But... Okay, um, so two follow up questions. One, if one reuses the work that is initially licensed under CC by NC and D to make a commercial translation for, for which they obtained a separate license from the author, should the attribution mention the original license or the license obtained to make the translation for commercial purposes? All right. Um, and now I see that people were talking about my sound breaking up. Uh, the sound on this is breaking up, but I think I heard the question. Uh, I hope people can hear me uh, because I still see people frozen on my screen. Uh, I might end up going camera off to save bandwidth a little bit if it gets uh, if it gets worth if it if it gets worse. Uh, but in that case, we're, you're making the translation. You're not depending on the CC license to make that translation because the license wouldn't let you. You got a separate license from the author. Uh, you don't need to mention the original license because your, your use is not depending on that license. Your use is depending on the separate license you got and whatever terms they gave you. Uh, but if you wanted to provide the license of the original work, there would be nothing to stop you from it. Say, if you knew that somebody wanted to make a reuse of that work and you wanted to enable reusers, you could mention it, uh, but you wouldn't be obligated to by the terms of the license because your use is dependent on the separate permission you got, not on the CC license. I apologize. I am going to go camera off. I usually like to be camera on when I'm talking, but I think my uh, internet connection is not that great today. Here's one I see. Uh, how to determine who to attribute for a wiki type web page where several users contributed changes? Uh, who among them would be legitimate to start distributing the resulting page under a new license if they wanted to change it? And would the site admins be able to make any kind of decision on the matter or would any kind of uh, terms of service specification allow them to do so? And I see this is a pretty similar question to the next one on the doc, which is 
Uh, I saw that Wikipedia had updated its default license from 3.0 to 4.0. Are you aware of the challenges they had to face in doing so? And could you explain how such a process works? And I see that Shana commented in the doc that I wasn't directly involved in it and can likely speak to it, which is true. Uh, so I'll try and uh, tackle both of those questions at, at once. Uh, first of like, how to determine who to attribute for like a wiki type web page. Uh, in general, anyone who makes a like copyrightable change to a page. So not just a spelling ed error, but uh, a sp not just correcting a spelling error or making like a small uh, tweak to the format, but making a change that would actually qualify for copyright. All, all of those people need to be credited uh, under the CC license. Uh, but the CC license is not prescriptive in the manner that which you do it. It's just, uh, you have to do it in a way that is reasonable. Uh, the colloquial uh, way that I like to explain it to people for what's reasonable attribution is something that you wouldn't be embarrassed to explain to either the author or a judge. Uh, the way that uh, practices, uh, the way that this gets done in practice by projects such as Wikipedia is that you can click on a link to a history page and then you can see who made what changes. Uh, you can uh, The entire list of authors is there, including people who made minor uncopyrightable changes just because uh, they have plenty of reasons other than copyright for wanting to see like who made what changes when, uh, but you can always see who is responsible for a particular piece of text and they're always uh, credited for that. Uh, really, uh, any way that uh, uh, any way that is reasonable to attribute, uh, how you determine who uh, is really anybody who made a copyrightable change. Uh, there is absolutely nothing wrong with credited people who crediting people who don't need to be credited, but you should never leave off uh, somebody who should be credited. Uh, so most people default to, to giving attribution for all, all people who contributed to the page, even if it wasn't necessarily a change that needed credit. Uh, uh, distributing under a new license would generally requ require the consent uh, of everybody who contributed uh, if you were going to distribute their part under a new license. Uh, because it's uh, because it's usually being thought of as like distributing a hundred separate works by a hundred separate authors rather than like one work with a gazillion authors. Uh, different jurisdictions have different rules over what counts as a work of joint authorship, where it is one work with a set of authors and any one of those authors can uh, make changes or make license decisions. Uh, in the United States, which is which is where I'm licensed in the jurisdiction that I know best, and uh, where most of my answers are going to default to thinking uh, U.S. specific, although I am going to, uh, I will call it out where I know that different situations are different. Uh, but joint authorship is usually like something you have to do deliberately. You uh, you don't do it accidentally. Uh, you and it requires a certain set of conditions that are usually not met by people who are doing like a wiki style page where people are contributing different things at different times and they didn't set out with a plan. Uh, so if you want to distribute a work like that under a new license, you usually need the consent of everybody who came in and made uh, changes. Uh, that's really hard to get uh, in massive projects. Uh, so what happens if you want have a project like Wikipedia with like hundreds of thousands of authors and you want to change the license? Uh, part of the answer is that you don't actually change the license. Uh, you get as many people as you can to agree uh, to it, but the original works uh, remain under the license that they were, and the next license is a compatible license with that. So uh, part of what they've uh, done is that, you know, all, all edits up to a certain point, like up to a certain date in time, or, you know, CC by 3.0, or by SA 3.0, uh, all edits after that are by SA 4.0. Uh, because 4.0 is compatible, you can do that. You can distribute the 3.0 material uh, and say that the new material is 4.0. And by complying with the CC by, uh, by SA 4.0 license for that new material, you're also complying with by SA 3.0. Uh, they've tried to get as many authors as they can to uh, uh, agree to that change. Uh, but Really, uh, you're always allowed to distribute the material under a compatible uh, under a compatible adapter's license, uh, and 
you generally want your community to agree to it uh, going forward. Uh, they wanted to get their community to agree to the change uh, in the terms of service going forward uh, because they want people to license their, uh, they wanted people to uh, license their content under 4.0 and consent to that change in a meaningful way. Uh, so they did do a massive community consultation process and tried to determine if there was anything in the licenses that would stop that from happening. Uh, I know there was a long period where people were trying to figure out whether database rights applied uh, since 4.0 does address database rights. Uh, but it eventually uh, determined that the 4.0 license like was going to was going to take into account everything that they wanted to take into account and the the community agreed that it would be a good choice going forward. Uh, a more interesting case happened in back in 2008, I believe, when it when the Wikipedia moved from the GFDL, uh, you know, the GNU Free Documentation License, which is uh, pretty rarely used now, to a CC license in the first place. Uh, that sort of happened by a big community vote and consensus and giving people the chance to opt out if they didn't want their, because those were not explicitly compatible license, uh, compatible licenses. There were some like, uh, <clears throat> There was like a new version of GFDL that was put out to include compatibility with Creative Commons, uh, which was a little bit of a hack and really kind of dependent on the community community to agree to it. Uh, because I think if the community had uh, massively objected to it, uh, it would have been challenged and probably would not have... Uh, uh, if it wasn't upholding the original spirit of what people were agreeing to, uh, you probably could have challenged that in court, but most people found that the conditions were basically the same as what they had uh, had agreed to. Uh, there are probably hundreds of, uh, hundreds of forum posts and mailing lists posts about this uh, period in history. Uh, I feel like a lot of the way like open licensing compatibility works is mostly that people agree that it is mostly the same thing and they're not uh, and they're not going to object to it if mostly the same conditions are followed. Uh, I hope this was not too rambly an answer. <laughs> oh, I think that was super helpful. Can I can I ask a follow up question on a very early part of what you said for this? <clears throat> so you were saying if if I were to attribute a Wikipedia page, I would need to um, attribute all of the authors of that page. Would it be sufficient to say, you know, buy and then link to the page that lists all of the authors so I don't have a super long attribution or is that kind of cheating? Yeah, uh, I think I think it really depends on like uh, the word reasonable is doing a lot of work there. Uh, in general, I think giving a link to the history page would probably be fine uh, as long as it's clear to a reuser or somebody who wants to, to be able to give credit uh, where they can find that. Uh, you don't want to like hide it or make it inaccessible. But I think, yeah, especially given space limitations, just linking to the li list of authors is usually going to be sufficient. And there are two questions in the chat. Um, do you want me to read those? Or? Uh, sure, I think, uh, I think I can, uh, yeah, I think I can read them. Uh, okay. Like, so somebody with a question about OER adaptations, uh, it seems really challenging to see or tell if an OER textbook is an adaptation of a previous OER textbook, despite the fact that the authors and or adapters are supposed to credit the original creator. I think the problem lies in that OER creators seem to be taking a more academic approach and might be citing the original work as sources or references using more traditional citation formats, which don't include CC licensing information. Uh, I'm wondering that you can speak more about this. Uh, this is one that I actually don't know a whole lot a lot about because it looks like it's more of a uh, more of an issue with like norms and uh, customs in uh, in OER publication. Uh, if they are adapting a CC licensed work uh, to make a new work, uh, they should be crediting that previous work in the licensing statement as uh, in addition to whatever the academic citation norms that they're following are. Uh, as a condition of like using that work under the CC license, they do need to be giving credit and indicating where that uh, original material came from. Uh, and uh, often this this serves two roles, uh, both uh, both in terms of like citation uh, and copyright. Uh, but where you have different citation norms and you would use your citation norms differently, you do still need to give that credit uh, for copyright. Uh, and if people aren't doing that correctly, they're 
they're probably violating a condition of the license if you can't figure out where that uh, additional material came from. Uh, that would be, yeah, that would be an area that I'd be interested in hearing more about, or uh, some of our uh, uh, open knowledge team would also be interested in hearing about and seeing if we can uh, help out with best practices there if that's not being done right. Uh, I, I see there's another follow-up question. It's, uh, if a planned use of a work is not covered by a license, for example, if it's by NC and the user wants to make a derivative work and sell it, uh, one can always contact in, uh, the original author and obtain a different uh, different license. Uh, that's correct. Uh, my initial question addressed in the first webinar was about the essay term and the er use of derivative work for confidential purposes. The derivative work will be shared, but within a restricted group of users. Uh, so yes, uh, the CC licenses are not exclusive. Uh, which means that you can offer additional license, uh, additional licenses to the terms that you offer as your CC license. Uh, and in fact, that's part of the reason that the non-commercial license uh, existed uh, is because uh, uh, it first ca came about largely from uh, talking to music creators who were like, look, I'm happy for people to just like share this for free, but if they want to use it commercially, like uh, I want to be able to sell license to licenses to them because that's how I make my money. Uh, uh, I actually put out a proposal some time ago to try to rename it to commercial rights reserved because that was a uh, it was widely misunderstood and nobody liked that because it's not as catchy as non-commercial. Uh, but that is how it functions. Uh, it's more of like you're not automatically licensing those lights; you're reserving those rights, and you as the author have the choice of to whether you want to license those, uh, whether you want to license those separately or not. Uh, if you just don't like commercial use at all, you're not required to give those people additional permissions. But if you want to sow those rights, you always can. Okay. Any other specific questions people want to see answered or should I just uh, keep picking at random? Is it is it required to inform the owners of external content that one wishes to use in their material that that such material will be included to in a work licensed under a CC license? So I'm uh, I'm not a hundred percent clear on this uh, question. If you're uh, so if uh, but in general you don't have to uh, if somebody has licensed their work under a CC license uh, you don't have to tell them uh, if you're using the work in compliance with the license. Uh, a lot of people will appreciate knowing, uh, but there's no requirement to tell them. All you have to do is comply with the license terms. Uh, if you're using material that isn't under a CC license and you want to include it in a CC licensed work, uh, say you have gotten a, like a stock photo that's under uh, under terms that allow it uh, to be used broadly and would be compatible with their use, uh, and then you'd have to look at like whatever, whatever conditions they put on it. Uh, if they don't require that you inform them. You don't have to, but you'd have to look at those separate terms. Uh, but CC licensed works, there's no requirement to inform the author. Uh, but you can if you want to. A lot of people would like to know. Let's see. So what are the licensing legalities behind digitization? Uh, this has come up in the discussion threads and I'm not clear on it. Digitization seems to be making a copy which would not constitute enough originality to be a new work. How then can a CC license be used on any or any copyright claimed if the physical item was already in the public domain? And what about di digitizing items that are still under copyright? So this one. This one has basically uh, already been covered uh, in some litigation, and in general, uh, digitization is not uh, is does not give the digitizer any copyright claim over the work. Like it is just mechanical making a copy. It's uh, something like format shifting. Uh, ideally, if you've digitized a work faithfully, you have not made any copyrightable changes. You've just repro reproduced that original item as faithfully as possible. Uh, and that may in, have involved a lot of like work, uh, a lot of time, a lot of effort, uh, but it hasn't involved a lot of the creative work required to uh, get you a copyright over the work. Uh, and this is 
true. We know this to be true in the, the United States and uh, in the UK. Uh, I think this is broadly accepted in the EU. <laughs> uh, I don't know if it has been tested in other jurisdictions, but uh, in most places, this is pretty broadly uh, accepted that you have not gotten a copyrightable change. Uh, a lot of people would still like recognition for the the actual work that they did in digitizing those uh digitizing those pieces and they would like to be acknowledged in some way uh, and CC encourages that you do that uh but the work is still the work is still in the public domain uh the digitizer has not gotten a new copyright in the work uh what we often recommend that you do is something uh that we are calling now CC0 plus attribution which is the work is in the public domain uh you know it's out of copyright uh, they haven't gotten a new copyright uh, but we recommend that as far it is as, as far it is as possible uh, that you credit the uh, the institution or the individual who did the work in bringing it to you. So, you know, somebody has di digitized a photo of like the Mona Lisa. Uh, you say like this is the Mona Lisa, you know, and you, uh, but also this was digitized by you know this institution, uh, and it's not a copyright requirement, but it does uh, certainly help. Uh, it certainly helps uh, the institutions, uh, institutions in particular that are bringing these works to you because uh, they like to, uh, yeah, be because acknowledgement and, and reputation and uh, is, is often a large uh, part of the reason why they're doing it. Uh, but if they try to make a copyright claim, and we have seen a lot of people try to claim CC BY uh, on these works, and this is not, uh, uh, this is not a valid use of CC BY. They have not gotten a copyright. They're just trying to make sure that their name is attached to it in some way. Uh, we discourage this, but we can't actually stop people from doing it. Uh, it's simply the case that if they tried to make a copyright claim on you, you could you could tell them to go away. They're incorrect, and they would they would not win in court if they tried to pursue that. Uh, uh, but that's the uh, that's the general status. <laughs> Can, can I ask, a? this may be too, I'm going to try to throw a monkey wrench in the works is really what I'm saying here. So for what, <laughs> what if you digitize all of these public domain works and put them in a, a collection um, and license, you know, the, the collection itself? Does that change any part of that answer? Uh, it, it can. Uh, so if, if you have put works in a collection and you have done some creative selection in the, in the, in the way that you have put together that collection. Um, like say, you're not just picking like all, you know, all, you know, I don't know. You're not just picking all impressionist artists or like all, you know, the Dutch masters, but you have chosen like, these are my favorite paintings. I have digitized them all and put them. You might have a copyright in the collection, which is separate from a uh, copyright in any individual work. Uh, and if you think that this is confusing and you don't know how this would be enforced, uh, that's a correct impression. Uh, a copyright in a collection is that if if somebody else tries to distribute that collection of things and say, these are my favorite paintings, uh, you might be able to enforce uh, against them for distributing that collection as it is. But if somebody were to simply take... Wouldn't be a copyright claim. Uh, there are also database rights. So say if you took, uh, you know, a very large collection, say like an institutional collection, and you know, so you have a million images and you digitized all of them. Uh, you might have some rights in the database, uh, not in any individual work. Uh, somebody could extract an individual work, but if somebody tried to, tried to redistribute the whole collection uh, in some jurisdictions, particularly in the EU and a few other places, uh, Depending on the conditions, you might have rights in the in the entire database, uh, which is a uh, not quite copyright, but is a copyright like right, trying to protect people's investments in uh, in uh, putting together large data sets or large collections like that. I see another one in the chat, which is. Uh, if a work that I wish to reuse is under all rights reserved and I obtain an authorization to reuse each work. Do I need to cite their license in the attribution? Should I indicate reproduced by permission or copyright author all, all rights reserved? Uh, you should attribute them uh, however they have chosen to, to be attributed. Uh, 
in in general as much information as you can uh, as you can include is helpful. Uh, you should you should probably say all of these things. Uh, copyright of the author, all rights reserved, reproduced by permission. Uh, frequently, they will give you a credit statement that they want, uh, and if you're not clear on it, yeah, you should you should clarify it with them because there's no standard conditions for a uh, for an all rights reserved work because uh, all of those rights and copyright are reserved to the author by by default. Uh, they don't have to give you permission at all, but if they give you permission, they can uh, be they can uh, kind of di dictate their terms to you as they want to. So. One of the one of the useful things about the CC licenses is that we do have a a fairly standard set of things that you need to uh, that you need to reproduce in order to be sure that you're complying with the license. Uh, that's the title, author's uh, source, and license, uh, and uh, we try and make that easy by providing the providing both the person marking a work and the person reusing a work with a very standardized statement. Uh, that doesn't always happen, but uh, we try and make it easy uh, standardized. Uh, but if you are using a work by permission, uh, you should uh, you should ask the source if you're not clear, uh, because you you will already have been in contact with them to get permission. Let's see. This is a good one. Uh, how does no derivatives apply to substantial excerpts? Uh, for institutional repository archives copies of our author's work, including contributed chapters to edited books. In these cases, we're only interested in archiving a copy of our author's specific chapter, but we've had some debate over CC by NC and D licensed books where the license is applied to the original work rather than chapter by chapter. Would ND prevent us from sharing an excerpted unedited chapter or is this too small a change to count as a derivative work? Uh, I found a few examples in the FAQs that are similar, but don't quite answer our concern. Uh, so I will say we do, we do address this a bit in the FAQ, and if uh, somebody could uh, link the section of the FAQ, which is a kind of large sprawling document, uh, that that might be helpful to the others. But in in general, we don't consider making an excerpt of an ND work to be to be a violation of the license. Uh, but it does depend on what your jurisdiction considers to be making a derivative. Uh, usually making an excerpt is not a creative or copyrightable change. Uh, you haven't made a derivative. You've simply you've simply taken a piece of the work unaltered. Uh, we would usually not consider that to be a violation of the license, and we do try to uh, address this in our F since that, that this would be a thing that would be disallowed. They should expect that people will be able to excerpt the work. Uh, so in general, this should be a thing that you are able to do. Uh, uh, it's always theoretically theoretically possible that uh, if you have that you can excerpt a work in a creative way that like changes the meaning or reinterprets it, or something that might be considered to be a creative artistic change, uh, and then it really depends on whether that would be considered to be like a creative uh, a creative contribution on its own right. Like, have you made a derivative or not? Uh, but in general, excerpting is not that. There's a lot of questions about adaptations in this uh this one. Oh, there's a, there's a new one in the chat. So let's see. Uh, back to my OER question from earlier, what would you take a licensing statement like this to mean? Title of OER, copyright to 2018 by authors, selection and editorial material, individual chapters, contributors, is licensed under a CC by 4.0 international license, except where otherwise noted. Is it trying to imply that that's a collection of OER materials? Let's see. Uh, you know, if I were to read that, and I'm going to take like a couple seconds to try and parse that uh, sentence. If I were to read that, 
I would say that the the material named that it's intending to say that the material named and the collection itself is is licensed under the CC by license. Uh, and you and e even if if you're using a CC license saying like, you know, copyright 2018 is still it's still correct to say uh, whether or not you're using a CC license. Uh, uh, I would I would read that to mean that the material and the selection are both under a CC by license. Uh, but if I were unsure, I would probably go ask the authors. And I feel like when you're when you're marking your works, when you're putting a copyright statement uh, on your works, uh, like if you if you have a question about what to say, like the thing that makes it clearer to the reuser is probably always the correct thing to uh, to say, because otherwise people ask questions and they might not know how to get in contact with you. See, I'll read the follow-up comment, which is glad it seems it's not just me that thinks that wording is kind of confusing. Uh, it was more the individual chapters, the contributors portions that I was confused by. Yeah, uh, it, it's just, uh, uh, it's not clear to me either. <laughs> uh, and it's, it's always best practice uh, if you're not sure to, to go and ask the authors. Uh, it's, it's usually... It's usually pretty uh, pretty safe to ask the authors of a CC licensed work because you knew that they meant to share it in, in some fashion in the first place. So you're not going to, you know, usually not going to draw their ire or draw their attention to you in a way that you don't want by asking them because they usually meant for you to reuse it. It's just a question of like what exactly and how. Let's see. If I use one or several images as illustrations of an article I'm writing, what do they count as? If we consider the images, my original text, and the final article that is the combination of the both of them, what is adapted, what counts as an adaptation, and what am I legally allowed to license under which terms? Typically, if I intend to release my work under CC by SA as much as possible, and I'm willing to search for compatible me media, but also if I wanted to license the text under more restrictive terms. And the very short answer to this is it depends. Uh, frequently, they're considered to be separate works and can be licensed separately. Uh, but in some, in some cases, you might have uh, created an adaptation. So say you wrote an article, uh, that article stands alone. Uh, and, and then, like, once you have this completed article, you've decided to search for images as illustrations. Uh, and you find some images, and you, uh, and you include them with your work. Generally, that would be considered to be two separate works. Uh, you, you have the article, you have the images, they're not adaptations of each other. It wasn't, it wasn't the, uh, the illustration building on the, the article, it was just you had a standalone piece of work, you found another standalone piece of work, and now you're distributing them together. Uh, is that complete piece of work with the article and the illustrations, like one complete work? Uh, I think I think it depends. Uh, I think you could possibly make an, uh, an argument for it. I, in most cases that I have seen, uh, I would consider that to be distributing two separate works. You have a text uh, under a license and you have images under a license. Uh, but I could see cases where you could make the argument that they're com that they're so completely integrated that they're one work. Uh, but in general, like uh, I think they would be separate works and that would that would bear on your decision as to like, oh, can I include you know CC by images with a CC by SA article? In general, yes. Uh, could you include a by ND image like with a by SA article? Like, you know, uh, I would frequently say that you probably could, but uh, you might, but if it could be interpreted that you, that it might be an adaptation, like uh, I would probably try to find something else instead where you know that they would be happy for it to be remixed with other works. 
uh, even if you were legally permitted to use it yet. Okay, I got another monkey wrench for you on this one. <laughs> this is something that tends to come up a lot with with our authors because we um, we tell them for accessibility purposes for very complex diagrams they need to explain them in the text so too long for an alt text. Um, and so let's say I have a a complex CC by SA image that I explain via text below it, um, but my book is CC by. How would I how how, go, how would I indicate that? And is that allowable? Yeah, that is an interesting corner case. Uh, because like my my thought about descriptions for accessibility purposes where you're really just describing the image. Yeah, I'm actually not I'm actually not sure if there's any uh if there's any case law on how that's considered. Like I almost consider that or like a reproduction in another format. Like you're just tr trying to reproduce that as well as possible for somebody who can't, uh, you know, who, you know, who can't use the original work as it's in. You want to, uh, that, uh, that uh, you should use something that you are able to adapt if that is considered an adaptation. Uh, I'm actually not sure on how that would be considered, but. And uh, and in all cases, of course, you can uh, yeah. If you're able to ask the author and say like like, is this okay by you? Uh, uh then uh, then uh, you sh should always uh, you you should always be able to do that. But if you're not able to contact the author, I would say be conservative about it. Uh, even though uh, I don't think you should have to be like I think that uh, describing for accessibility should just be considered to be like making another copy of the work, but. It's hard to know how people will interpret that sometimes. I'm not sure if that was a helpful answer. Yeah, it was. Thank you very much. I, I have a follow-up question on this. Uh, when we do adaptations for accessibility purposes, isn't this covered by exceptions and limitations to copyright? Uh, uh, some of them are. Uh, and this will depend on which jurisdiction you're in. Uh, some of them have different exceptions uh, than others for accessibility, uh, but for example, you know, making making Braille versions is all uh, is often uh, you know ex extremely protected by law. Uh, uh, but say if you're describing a painting for for like uh, visually disabled people, like, and you have made a new text work, uh, is you know, that's often like not me not making a copy, so that's uh, because you haven't copied any of the painting. Uh, is it making an adaptation? Uh, I would probably argue not, uh, but I don't actually know how that that would come out. Uh, there are some categories of things that are that are clearly protected in law, like you're allowed you're allowed to do this to be accessible for people with vision or hearing uh, disabilities. Uh, but if you're trying to make a work accessible in some other way. For example, if you're trying to make a version that uh, simplifies language because uh, there, there's a version that's too complicated for people with reading disabilities to read, uh, then uh, is that making an adaptation? Uh, I think generally considered, yes, like that's not specifically called out in the law, uh, even though you're making your version for accessibility purposes. Uh, so in this case, you should be, uh, you should know what the laws of your jurisdiction allow you to do. Uh, and things that are not called out are much more of a much more of a judgment call, and will often be found to be making an adaptation of the work. Uh, there's another one in the chat, which is: Do CC licenses expire like copyright uh, it does in the U.S. Life of the author plus seventy years. Uh, so in two hundred years, CC licensed works uh, might CC licensed works be considered in the public domain? Uh, yes. The CC licenses depend on the underlying rights and copyright. Uh, what the CC licenses do is they basically, they're a layer on top of copyright that says like copyright grants you these exclusive rights. Uh, they, they grant me these exclusive rights as the author. Uh, as the author, I'm going to release some of these exclusive rights to the public under these conditions. Uh, so for example, like if you've created something uncopyrightable uh, or for example, you've digitized a public domain work, uh, 
If you don't have copyright to begin with, you can't use a CC license on it. Uh, the CC license doesn't override the public domain. Uh, similarly, when the copyright license expires, uh, the CC license on top of it doesn't have any rights to license. Uh, all the rights already belong to the public because it's in the public domain. Uh, so CC licenses apply only to copyright only to copyrightable material and only for the, to the extent to which it is copyrightable. Uh, so uh, this also applies to limitations and exceptions to copyright, such as fair use. Uh, if copyright wouldn't restrict the worst work so that a reuser needed a license, uh, then the CC license also doesn't apply. Uh, the CC license only applies to works where you would need a copyright license from the author to use that work, and the CC license grants some of those rights to the public automatically under those conditions. There's one in the paper, like, what advice would you give to an organization that wants to start releasing their original productions, such as text, pictures, or videos under a CC license? Uh, and how would they go about releasing all their past works as well? Uh, the main advice I would give uh, is to be very clear about, like, what you want out of those works. Um, and, like, what, what rights you need, what rights you want to give away. Uh, largely because the CC licenses are not revocable. Uh, once you've made a decision to release something under a CC license, if you find out that you made a mistake or you'd like to take it back, uh, you can't take back that choice. Uh, other people are always still free to distribute it under the CC license. So you should be clear on what you, uh, on whether it's the right choice for you first and kind of examine like what your business case is, like what kind of cr credit you need, things like that. Uh, because we love people using CC licenses and we think it's uh, good for the commons when you do, but we also don't want you to feel bad about that choice. We want you to make that choice because it's right for you and the commons, not because, not just because somebody pressured you into it. Uh, if you uh, call us for a consultation, we won't give you the high pressure sales tax tactics. We'll encourage you to like think about what you need out of the work. Uh, for example, you know how are you planning to make your money? If you need to make your money out of the work, uh, is it important to you to get credit? What kind? Like, how do you feel about commercial uses? Do you want them to be licensed? So really think about like, what are the use cases you want? What are the use cases you don't want? Uh, and to think really carefully about those. Uh, but if you've decided then that a CC license like is what you want, uh, because it does help you contribute to the commons, uh, a lot of open projects can use them, uh, specifically like open knowledge and open education, and, uh, uh, and, and, you, and we hope that you do want that. Uh, if you want to release all your past works, uh, you can simply uh, place a licensing statement uh, on wherever you're distributing those works, uh, you know, provided that you were the author and you have the rights to release them. Uh, if if you're not the author, say you uh, you're also including third party content, you would need to get permission from all those other uh, authors. Uh, but if it is your content, you can simply put a licensing statement, say on your website or uh, wherever it is you're distributing those works, and say like, you know, all of our all of our works, you know, from this date to this date are uh, are under this license. Uh, you might acknowledge that they were previously under they were previously under another license, and they're now under this one. Uh, Depending on the depending on what your previous terms were, you may have to. Uh, uh, that might not be revocable. People may still be able to distribute under your old terms. Like say, if you were using another license in the past, uh, if they were previously all rights reserved, you can you can simply say like they're they're Creative Commons now. Uh, but just um just some statement where it is clear to a reuser and they could go back and. Uh, and find out what the licensing for those works are. Uh, it is helpful to mark every individual work if you are able to do that, but it's not required. Uh, it should just be clear to a, to a user like which works are covered by your licensing statement. Oh, yeah. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi. I I I uh, wasn't sure whether I can unmute myself. It's uh, Alexandra here, and I think if I may ask a question, I think it's gonna be easier instead of typing. Uh, you may. Yeah. Okay. 
uh, if an author working in an institution where by contract the author doesn't own the owners the copyright of the, the material they prepared, now they want to publish it externally with a commercial publisher, let's say. The institution is fine to allow the publication of this material, reserving the copyright. Who decides how, under what license, this article is going to be published? Like, concrete case, like, international organization owns the copyright to the article, but allows this article to be published by Springer, Elsevier, commercial publishers. Can the international organization impose the license, the CC BY license on this article? Even the article hasn't been published. It's not published by the international organization, was written, the copyright belongs, and then the article is handled to the publisher. Who decides on the license? Uh, under which general, this article is going to be published. So, uh, in, uh, the the person or entity who owns the copyright to the material is the one who gets to decide how it's licensed. Uh, so if if you have if you have assigned your copyright to an international organization, uh, you as you as the author may not have any rights to determine what the license is anymore. Uh, it, like the the organization is the rights holder; they get to determine how it's licensed. Uh, and then, uh, so even if the work is not published by the organization, but we allow, we authorize the external publisher to publish this work that was written internally to publish it by them, we still have a say. We still can say that this article must go out under the CC BY license. Uh, so, so if if the publisher is saying like, uh, or. Uh, I guess I, I I lost a thread somewhere in that question. Uh, it's it's always the person or entity who owns the rights who gets to say what the license is. Uh, and okay. say if a publisher a publisher is saying like that they want a particular license, uh, it's the person who holds the rights who who can agree to that or not. Okay. Uh, so the license can be assigned to the material even before it's published. That's right. Perfect. Thank you so much. Thank you. And this and this happens a lot. For example, for for works of like if you uh, if you're working for a company and you like you say you've assigned your authorship to a company or you're doing a work for hire or you know maybe you're at a some universities uh, claim copyright on their uh, their uh, authors' works and some don't. Uh, but yeah, you can always like. Uh, uh, in in most cases, you can assign rights to somebody else, and then somebody that somebody else has the right to determine what the licensing is. Um, and yeah, you you can you can assign or you can assign your copyright to somebody else before a work is published. Uh, it doesn't matter to the general public uh, until that work is published, uh, because nobody has gotten the work yet. But once the work is distributed, uh, then it matters. Right. It wasn't assigning the copyright. It was assigning the license. Signing the license, yeah. Uh, you can you can always a uh, you can always put a license on a thing before you publish it. Uh, it it doesn't matter to anybody but y you and uh, and the other party uh, until that point. Uh, because right. a, a CC license doesn't mean you have to distribute. It just means that uh, if you distribute the work, it has to be under these terms. So we can, for example, send the article already with copyright OECD copyright. And uh, and the CC by license attached to it by email, and that would be valid. That's right. Uh, and the the publisher has their uh, and then if a publisher receives that and so and it has a CC by license on it, uh, they can choose whether to accept that or not. Uh, say the publisher has a policy that they don't publish CC by works, then they might have to negotiate you with you for another license. Correct. Uh, yes. But if the publisher does publish CC by li uh, licensed works, then they know that. That that's already the rights, and they are able to publish under those terms. Okay, thank you so much. All right, and uh, I hope that was uh, I hope that did clarify the uh, question for the Edward in the chat.
it's the same here. Uh, there's another one. Uh, how do other open licenses play with CC ones? For example, a, a faculty member recently inquired about creating a derivative work using OER content created with a CC by 4.0 license and a GFDL 1.2 license. I'm not sure if this is feasible, but my initial impression is that it might be possible if the derivative work is licensed under G GFDL and in a way that also complies with the CC by 4.0 license. Uh, and I can't follow those links uh, right now to look at the situation in detail. <laughs> but uh, in general, if you have a, a piece of material that is under two licenses, um, we uh, it is permitted. Uh, we call it dual licensing. Uh, and it means that you can use that material uh, under under either of the license uh, under either of the licenses chosen. Uh, uh, if there's one piece of material where there are parts of it under one license and parts of it under another license, uh, that means if you want to create a new work that uses those materials, uh, then you have to comply with both of those licenses. Uh, and you'd have to keep acknowledging both of those licenses in the in the same way that you'd have to keep acknowledging uh, uh, keep acknowledging, say, you had material under like, both by and by NC. You'd have to you'd have to acknowledge both of those licenses. Uh, so uh, I'm not clear from the question, and I probably would be clear if I followed and looked at the links uh, whether this is one piece of material that is uh, under two licenses, and you can choose which one you'd like to comply with or whether it's like parts are under one license, parts are under another. Uh, but that means if you want to keep distributing both of those parts, you have to keep complying with both of those licenses as long as you are continuing to use a uh, material that is under under one, uh, under one both of those licenses. Oh, great. Uh, and Rebecca has uh, included a guide on like a guide to the dual license, which is very helpful. And this this does seem sorry just to, to follow up on this um, that there are two separate works that are being combined. I've, I've followed the links. Oh, excellent. Um, and I, I'm just wondering if it's because CC BY is is pretty um, allows a lot of things. Uh, mm -hmm. GFDL, I don't know about that one, but it unless it takes away attribution, it seems like right. you'd be able to license it under GDFL, right? That's right. Uh, in in general, if you have material that's under under two licenses, uh, and you have to comply with both. As long as you can comply with both, uh, that's uh, that's totally fine to do. You do have to make sure you comply with both. Uh, CC BY is extremely liberal, and like pretty much as long as you're giving attribution and mentioning the CC license, you're good. Uh, GFDL has some other re restrictions. It's a uh, it's a very it's it's very similar to BY SA in spirit, but it's got a lot of like little weird bits and pieces to it. Uh, it's, but it is another share-alike license meant for documentation. Uh, it was Wikipedia's original license, and it is still the license for a lot of the, the software GNU project documentation. Uh, but yeah, it, like if it is possible to comply with both of those licenses, and in general it is, there are not a whole lot of sets of open licenses where complying with one means you're in violation of the other. Uh, sometimes you might have to do some like weird things with attribution strings, or you might have to like you know, include credit, include more credit statements than you might otherwise, but it's usually possible to do this. Yeah, you just have to find a way to do that, do it that it's, that's clear to your reusers. I'm gonna say it looks like we're coming up on the end of the hour to each. If there aren't any um, last minute questions, I just want to jump in and say thank you so much, Kat, for doing these. These are always um, just my favorite parts of, actually, honestly, my favorite parts of the year when these come <laughs> up, because they're always so fascinating. So thank you. Yeah, I'll say this. Uh, this is always a lot of fun. I enjoy hearing the questions that come up, and I hope that my answers are helpful. Uh, and like, uh, Thank you so much for uh, for everyone, especially for like uh for our lovely facilitators who I'm sure have been doing an excellent job. Uh, uh and yeah, for all your participants, like I hope to hear from you in the future. Uh, I've got to run off to another meeting, but uh, it was really uh, enjoyable to do this, and I hope to see some of you in the future. <laughs>